Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Tennessee Historical Commission. I am so delighted to see everybody here. Uh, I'm Patrick McIntyre. I'm the executive director here, so it is a terrific afternoon. We've got a lot to accomplish in an hour. Steve Rogers is one of our senior staff members. He's been here over 30 years, and he is really the expert, the historian on Cloverbottom uh, Mansion, on the story of John McClain, the young enslaved resident who escaped from here, left here in 1862, and he can give us a great context about this particular property. The story of Cloverbottom, written by a former slave on the farm, documents previously unrecorded chapters in the farm's history and sheds new light on the interaction between the role of owner and slave. And like many farms that had account books, farm journals, and personal correspondence that John had the luxury to mine through in, in Wessington, Cloverbottom did not. John was one of 60 enslaved African Americans that was part of the James Hoggett Plantation. He, he lived here with his grandmother and three brothers, born in August of 1852, and he lived on the plantation until he left with troops from the 13th Michigan Infantry in, in 1862, uh, decided to emancipate himself and was gone. The General Assembly of Tennessee received thousands of anti-slavery petitions, including a proposal to prohibit the domestic slave trade, bringing any more slaves into Tennessee. But none received positive reception. One governor denounced such petitions as insults to the South and refused to convey, the, convey them to the General Assembly. This document is a list of slaves born on Westington or purchased from 1795 to 1860. So I use this document and many others to trace my genealogy and all the other families from Westington. Uh, this is a copy of an actual slave bill of sale and it's for my great, great, great grandmother whose name was Jenny and she's featured in the uh, museum exhibit at the Tennessee State Museum. Um, in the Washington family papers which were deposited in the Tennessee State Library and Archives in the 1960s, there's 11,000 documents, and I've gone through all these documents many times, tracing my ancestry and all the others. We are so excited about this day. This um, started a couple months ago, I guess, back in December when uh, Dan Brown, my colleague here, and I were talking, and um, we were talking about the Slave Dwelling Project. The Slave Dwelling Project is a lot like it sounds. I travel across this nation seeking out extant slave dwellings, and I ask the owners to spend a night in them. The reason I do it is because these slave cabins are often ignored. A lot of times we are eager to put the resources into preserving the big house or the mansion on the plantations, but we tend to um, stay right there stay within the confines of that building. Well, um, behind a lot of those buildings are the slave cabins, and this project brings attention to those slave cabins. So this project has been quite successful. Uh, I've stayed in about uh, 57 dwellings so far in 12 different states. The motivation for continuing this is to give the people who were enslaved the, the honor and the glory that they didn't receive when they were here on this earth. <laughs> 